Today on Photo Kitchen, we're going to demystify the Adobe Lightroom Classic Catalog and give you simple steps to getting up and running with this amazing program. Hello and welcome to episode number 72 of Photo Kitchen. I am your humble host, MD Welch, and today we're talking Adobe Lightroom Classic Catalog. That is a mouthful, and it's also a technology that seems to really throw people into a bit of confusion when using this program. I've been teaching Adobe Lightroom Classic for many years now, and I could tell you without a doubt, when we bring up the catalog, when the catalog is being taught in class, it causes the most amount of confusion for new users for Adobe Lightroom Classic. So rather than explain the catalog, I'm not gonna waste your time on it. I'm going to give you simple steps to getting the catalog up and running, using it and giving you the success and tips that you need to just start working with this program without stressing about the actual catalog. Now, this is very beginner oriented kind of information. So if you already know a lot about the catalog, might not be the video for you, maybe check out another video, uh, which would be a great time to also subscribe to the channel, by the way. But if you are just starting off with Lightroom Classic or you're struggling with the catalog, this is the place to be. I also wanna stress though, I'm not going to get super deep into the technology of the catalog. That's where I think most of the confusion and most of the trouble and most of the bad teaching that happens with Adobe Lightroom Classic begins and ends. So rather, I'm just gonna give you some steps, get you up and running, and I'm just gonna keep telling you, trust the technology. It works if you just rely on Lightroom Classics catalog and it does a phenomenal job. So first thing, Odds are you probably should just start off with making a brand new catalog. That is the best way to start off with, uh, you know, working successfully with this program if you're still struggling with it. So I'm going to come up to file on the mini bar. I'm going to come down to new catalog, click the mouse button once, and this is going to open up a dialog window, a little bit different on Windows and Mac, but essentially there's only two things that Lightroom Classic wants to know, what you're going to call the catalog and where you're going to store it. And here's my first tips of the day. I highly recommend storing all all of your catalog information in the same location with all of your photos. And as a small side note, I think it's great to get your photography, your video, your documents, all that other kind of stuff on a separate hard drive. It makes it easier to back up. It makes it easier to manage. So that's just a small little side tip that's, uh, that's just included in this video. But I save my Lightroom catalog in the same area as the photos. Now what's being saved in here? How is it working? We don't really care, honestly, again, as I'm going to say a lot, trust the system. So I'm going to go ahead and call this, in this case, Photo Kitchen. And I like to include the word catalog and the name of the catalog file and also the year of the version of Lightroom Classic that I'm currently using. So right now, Lightroom Classic, the current version is 2023. I highly recommend including that because when 2024 comes out, it will ask you to upgrade the catalog and give it a new name. And then you go from 2023 to 2024. And it hopefully by that point, you're a little bit more comfortable with the catalog and you can manage those files a little bit easier. So include the date there. Um, and that's a huge tip. Now, if you don't do that, Lightroom Classic is still going to work because the catalog, again, trust the system, the technology is there, but I recommend doing those two things. The other thing I recommend is saving, again, the catalog in the same area as the photos. That way, when you're backing up everything, it's also backing up the catalog as well, uh, keeping everything current. So I'm going to save this in a folder that it's already put me into, which I call current jobs. Now, can you have multiple catalogs? Yes. If you're watching this video, should you have multiple catalogs? Probably not. So just save it in the area with where all your photography is being stored and it's going to be fine. And if you name the catalog, include catalog in the year in there, it's going to be just easier to find if you do need to dig into your catalog, which you probably don't need to do in a lot of instances. So when you click create here, what will happen is Lightroom will shut down. If you have a catalog as I do already open, it will shut down this catalog. And depending on when you're watching this, there's a glitch right now that Lightroom doesn't restart. You have to restart Lightroom or Lightroom Classic to be specific, and then it will open up the new catalog, which is happening on my computer. So we'll fix that and edit. So when I click create, it's gonna ask me to back this up. We're gonna talk about that at the end of the video. I'm just gonna say skip this time for the moment, and then Lightroom's gonna shut down, and then I will have to restart it up with the new catalog. 
through the magic of editing, now we're looking at the brand new catalog here. And again, I had to restart Lightroom Classic. Don't be surprised if you have to do that. I don't know why that glitch exists and never existed before. Dear Adobe, please fix this. So now you have a brand new catalog. And I'm not gonna go super deep into importing photos in here because I'm going to include a link about a video that I did about importing things into Adobe Lightroom Classic that will help you out there. But understand that Lightroom Classic is not a file browser. You first must bring in images into Lightroom Classic and what Lightroom Classic is going to do, or more specifically Catalog, is it is going to manage these files for you. So you always have to bring in images first. So when you create a brand new catalog and you're like, where are all my images? It's only showing you images that you have brought in. They use the word import and it sounds like you're actually bringing them into the program and not really, you're managing the files. You're telling Adobe Lightroom, hey, pay attention to this information. I want to manage these, these images and that is what the catalog is going to do for it. So of course, the first step is always to import some information. I'll just go ahead and click on this and then I will come into here. I will find some information to, or a job that I need to import. Let's import these images here. And again, I go into a lot of depth in the import video about all of this stuff, so I'm just going to skip over it. But I will say, if you are starting brand new with Adobe Lightroom Classic, you're following these tips here, and you know you have images scattered all over the place on your computer, and you're trying to centrally locate all of those images into one place, a good thing to do is use either the move feature or the copy feature when you import the images. Not only does it bring the images into Lightroom to manage, it will also move the images using the destination panel here and moving them to whatever location or hard drive that you want to. And again, that's all in the import video and that's all I'm gonna say about importing. So now I've hopped back over into a catalog that's already had images brought into it. The Lightroom catalog is managing all of my images that I import inside of this program, and it remembers anything that I've done. Metadata, rating, keywording, all of that stuff is being written to the catalog. So again, trust the program, trust the application. It will remember all of this information. It's so good that if you come over into the folders panel, which by the way is located in the library module, you will see every hard drive that has ever been connected to this Lightroom catalog and had images imported into this program even hard drives that no longer exist. If you look closely in the folders panel, this is another great tip. You will see all of the hard drives listed here. A green light next to the hard drive means that it is currently on and it has enough room to import information. If that light was yellow, you're starting to run out of space to import information. And when I say information, of course, I mean photos. And if the light is red, you have run out of space, time to run down to Best Buy or get online and buy a new hard drive. So yellow, start to be concerned. Red, you're definitely running out of space and maybe, you just need to delete some images, by the way. That's for another video. If you have a hard drive that is grayed out with the box now being gray next to it, the Lightroom catalog is remembering these those images, even though that, that hard drive is essentially not connected to the computer anymore. What's great about this is if you had moved information and you did it outside of Adobe Lightroom Classic, you can reconnect the images here. So I could come in and click on one of these folders here that is grayed out right click or control click on a Mac if you haven't set up right click and say, go find this missing folder. Now, as long as I know where this folder exists on another hard drive or maybe where it's been moved, this is really easy to establish where these files are and the file management of the catalog will just go ahead and take over here and it will remember everything that was already done. So now when I click on this, you will see all of the images here, all of the ratings, even though that these files were missing, couldn't be found by Lightroom Classic. It still remembered what was done, any development settings. Again, trust the application. Anything that has been brought into Adobe Lightroom Classic will be viewed in the folders panel. You could click on any folder and you could actually see what information that you have there and then start to work on that information. Another huge plus of the Lightroom catalog is that it is not a file browser, meaning you can look at multiple folders at a time. Now, the benefit of this is, is let's say I want to look at my San Francisco vacation and my Oregon trip vacation. I could select both of these folders from the folders panel here and then come into attribute and select maybe five star images and see all of the five star images. Of course, the ratings have to be done by you, but the catalog is remembering all of this information no matter how much time has passed by. Again, trust the program. It will remember all of this information for you. If I double click to select this image that I've done some developing on, I'll come over to the develop module. And even though that I have not actually worked with this image, I kid you not, in years, the history panel has everything that I have done to this image over time. 
This again is another function of the catalog. It's remembering everything that is done to the photos because it is a file management program. So I can go back and undo, you know, go back in time and say, well, what did this look like before I did uh, this? Or maybe I converted to black and white. I could take a look at those that information. There's all sorts of power and availability here when developing your images. Now, one thing that does throw many people who are just starting off with Lightroom Classic for a loop is that there is no save. There's no new document, there's no save document or anything like that. And the reason why is because of the catalog. The file management function of this program is remembering everything that you do to the image in real time. Sure, if the computer was to crash or you lost power, you might not remember the last few steps, but it does a pretty good job of remembering everything that you've done. You don't have to turn a switch on, you don't have to enable this, this is included inside of the catalog. The last thing to talk about with catalogs really that's of any importance here is a feature called backing up catalogs. And you could access this by either going up to Lightroom on the menu bar if you're using a Mac. If you're on the Windows operating system, go to edit and you will find this information underneath edit at the very bottom. And in this case, instead of going to preferences, you're going to go to catalog settings. Now, one nice feature is if you did lose track of where your catalog was, but you start up Lightroom and it shows you that catalog inside of the general category here, you can actually see or show where this catalog is currently being stored. So if I hit show here, it will actually show me my catalog and I could see all of the information inside of here. Rarely, if ever, do you have to look inside of this folder, but if you did, one of the reasons might be because you want to move the catalog. If that is the case, go into Lightroom, make sure that you can find the catalog by hitting show here and then take that whole catalog folder and move it to a new hard drive, but only when Lightroom is closed down. So quit out of the program first, then move this folder to wherever you want it to be, then open up this folder and double click on a file that ends in LRCAT. The name of your catalog will be in front of that, but the LRCAT, that's the actual catalog database. When you double click on that, it will start up Lightroom and it will just basically just work in the new location. It knows where all the files have been written, and as long as you didn't move files outside of Lightroom catalog, you will be just fine and all of your images will be synced up and it's like nothing actually happened. Now, one thing that I do recommend is backing up the catalog. And you can see that I have a folder here called catalog backups. I'm going to show you how to do this in a second, but I will stress that it's a good idea to back up the catalog in the same location with the actual catalog itself. You're not backing up the images. Again, you're managing images with the catalog. You're not actually bringing them into the program. What you're backing up here is this database information, this file management that's remembering the location and the development settings and all of that kind of stuff. If you were to lose your catalog, you would not lose your images, but you would lose all the work that you've done to the images. So Lightroom has a backup feature that's included with this. Now, again, I save it all in here so everything's getting backed up. And if I open this up, you'll see that all of the catalogs basically are done by date and time, and there's a zip file inside of there. This can start to take up some serious hard drive space. So what I would do every now and then is open up your folder and delete all of them, but maybe the like the last or the two most recent backups. Now to actual backup settings, and the last thing that I'm gonna leave you with in class, I'll come back up, go to catalog settings here, is that I would back up every time that Lightroom exits. And this feature is found down here at the bottom where it says backup. This way, when you quit out of Lightroom, it will automatically backup for you so you don't have to worry about doing this at a particular time or setting. And you should always quit out of Lightroom once you're done with it, once you're done editing. And that also means that you're also backing up at the exact same time. Don't leave the program open and running for days at a time. Not a great idea for backing up. Now, when you do this, I'll go ahead and close this window down and I'm going to end the video by quitting out of Lightroom, which is kind of fitting here, you will get this dialog window asking you where you want the catalog backed up. Now, the nice thing about this window is once you make these settings changes, they are locked in. So it's a set and forget kind of situation. You can change the frequency of which it backs up. Again, I highly recommend backing up when Lightroom exits. The backup folder, again, as I mentioned before, put that in the same location as your catalog. It will put this in a catalog backup folder automatically for you. Just keeps everything consolidated together, makes life nice and easy. Also check these two boxes for testing the integrity and optimizing the catalog. And every time that you quit out of Lightroom, this window will come up and it's a great idea to back up. 
you can find, it's rare, but you can find from time to time the catalog files do get corrupted. And if they get corrupted, you want to be able to go back to a recent backup and start fresh from that particular point. So that's why backing up is so important. Again, if the catalog becomes corrupted, you don't lose your images. You just lose all of that time and work that you've done inside of this program. If you follow these simple steps, if you set up a catalog correctly, you start importing images inside of it, and you just let Lightroom do the work and trust the technology, regardless if you can make sense of what the catalog is actually doing, you're going to be productive in this program. If you have any questions or any concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to me. If you found this video useful, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, share with your friends, and until next time, this is MD Welch wishing you all the best from the Photo Kitchen.